The 2023 IAMI Euro Series is about to get underway. And where better to kick it off than on the Zuera International Circuit in northern Spain, in the province of Aragon, just a few hours away from the tiny principality of Andorra and three hours from the city of Barcelona. Nearby Zaragoza is full of beauty, culture and extravagance and it's very fast around this particular circuit. One of the fastest in Europe to add to the thrill and the challenge of the spectacle. 1.7 kilometers around, and in the slipstream, drivers will be pushing to a top speed nearing 130 kilometers an hour. Considering the drivers are as young as eight at this level, it could be a fascinating weekend. And with 15 corners to negotiate, the men and women across mini, junior, and senior are gonna be challenged right to their peak. Last year, Dan Kelleher, Macaulay Bishop and Evan Gilter were the victors. 200 racers are coming back in Zuera in 2023 for their first taste of glory. 125cc engines power the juniors and seniors, whereas in X30 Mini, it's the Water Swift 60 that pushes them on to glory. Tyres will be critical to look after in Zuera. MG Yellows, the medium compound for seniors, Red Hard for juniors and the Comets for the X30 Minis. Every racer will be using the 102 octane Pantacart control fuel. It's going to be a battle to the glory for the weekend here in Suela, in Spain. The X30 Mini category showcases phenomenal talent for drivers aged 8 to 12, and it is an incredible competition. With 60cc engines producing 10 brake horsepower, that can push the drivers to a top speed of 105 kilometers an hour. They come from all four corners of the globe. For some of them, it's their first taste of international competition at this level. And of course, with so many competitors, over 50 from all over the world, you're going to get magnificent motorsport and great overtaking. And we're racing for the first time in 2023 in the IAM Euro Series. Good start from Phillips. Lovin and Rau are trying not to lose too much ground. They slot into fifth and sixth behind Phillips, Manac, Marquez and Rivals as they head up towards the first hairpin. It's going to be a tough start and there's a couple of cards going off the road at the first couple of corners of the race. There is a spinner. It looks to me like the 974 that's got around there, I'm afraid. Austin that Newstead. Is Austin Newstead, the new boy. Rivals, who has dropped all the way down to eighth place now. Here comes Archie Lovett, makes his move into second position. And the British boy Wonder now going to charge after Jesse Phillips. Can he take on the King of Valencia? She's keeping herself in the hunt. She's already made up three places. She could make the move here for Gustavo Marquez. She senses the chance, goes for the move, and she's through. Lovely job. Alaban follows suit as well, sees the opportunity and goes for it. Uh, perusing oh, also. Look what that's done for Marquez though. That's yeah. run him onto the curb and he's lost so much momentum. Marquez all the way down to P11. Well, that's Mini X30 racing in a nutshell, really. As soon as one goes through, the rest go through. It is uh, one of those most unfortunate things. So here comes the move from Alaman. He's going to get Dan Miron going with him as on the grass goes Endicott. So that's going to be Alaman and Miron moving their way forward up into fifth and sixth places. And it looks as though Simons is going to get some support from Peruzzi to make the same move. So Angelina Simons is now the leading George Gibbons motorsport driver in the fray. For P4, they have dropped Peruzzi. And it's still kicking off in the background here as uh, Renault is getting involved here. That was beautifully done by Zach Zhu. Zhu managed to slice himself up the inside of Camperin, Rivals and Polisond. So he's managed to make a, a good couple of places there. And here comes Camperin. Camperin gets the run up the inside. Zach Zhu, unfortunately, opening the door a little bit there. And Matteo Rivals nearly got through. Zhu was able to shut the door in time. And Teo Polisond now slips through. Great wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen soon. I don't think he'll leave it to the very last lap because then well, he might leave it to the very last lap. I'm not too sure because it all falls down to how much really he wants to defend for. Does he want to leave it to the last few corners or will he think that, no, that's too late. I want to do it earlier rather than later and defend my way to the end. Here and he goes. He's going to go early. He's going to go now down through turn five into the tight to turn six, gets it done on Phillips and moves up into the race lead. So it's love it now from Phillips. Rao still about 1.5 seconds further down the road in third. This is brilliant from Lovett. He's found absolute immense pace at the end of this one. And he has just driven away from Phillips. And start to check out. This could be an absolute steal for Archie Lovett. And here's the move up the inside of Endicott. Not a lot he can do as Simons gets through with Peruzzi. 
So they managed to get back through in the sixth and seventh places. This is another great run from another great Spanish lady in Mini X30. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we were talking up the favours of Luna Flusha, and now Simons battling away with Peruzzi and Endicott, who now manages to get through up the inside of Peruzzi. Simons goes with him. So they continue to battle, but now Peruzzi on the exit. And Simons is going to get run out to dry here. Marquez, Manak, and oh. then Babacek going wheel to wheel with Bruno Priam. Priam losing out the graph, but that was so nearly a big shot. That curb isn't overly large, but the minis make it look massive, don't they? And got absolutely rattled. This is the replay of that one. You could just see squeezed oh. by Zenit Babacek there. Archie Lovett came here with a game plan. Work with your teammate, get yourself into a good position, get a reasonable start. He slotted into fifth position initially, but he picked them off one by one to fourth, to third, to second. Hustled Jesse Phillips all the way through. And on lap nine, he managed to find the move and has pulled away since then. It is an absolute textbook performance from Archie Lovett in the first chance of 2023 to run away and hide. He has done so. Archie Lovett wins in Zuera, the first Mini X30 final of 2023. Magic for Archie Lovett and Oliver Rowland Motorsport. They take a big scalp against Fusion in the first final of the year. Archie Lovett, victorious in Zuara. Archie Lovett wins from Jesse Phillips and Kanish Grau. Dan Menon in fourth position ahead of Dan Aleman, who fights back to P5. Max Endicott in sixth from Gustavo Marquez, Leo Peruzzi, Ben Manak, and Zach Zhu. In third position for the United Kingdom, Kanish Grau. And in second position also for the United Kingdom, Jesse Phillips. And on the top step of the podium, our newest winner in Mini X30, Archie Lovitz. That was a very tough race, but you timed it to perfection on lap nine and got the victory. Talk us through the race. Uh, so, I was, I, got, I was starting second in the outside and I end up fifth, and Kanish ended up pushing me. So I just stuck to Kanish, and no, Jesse's bumper for about five laps, and then I overtook him and gapped him, and then I won. <laughs> and then you took the victory. There's three more to go. How are you feeling heading to Marienburg next? Good. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, your newest winner, Archie Lovitz. In the year the driver turns 12 years old, you step up to X30 Junior, and it's a massive transition. Cards at this level have more than double the horsepower, which carries the driver to a top speed of 125 kilometers an hour. So obviously the racing is more brutal and more intense. The battles are harder too. Plus, there's a change in tire compound, which means the driver has to learn a new method of looking after their tires. The weight goes up as well, which is another added pressure to give the drivers at this level. I have a feeling we're going to go around again this time, though. And oh, we are, we are racing. Up to the first corner, Hugo Magnas gets the perfect start. Kinsey goes with. Clark drops into fourth position behind Bartle, I do believe. And as they work their way forward up to turn two, it is going to be an incredible start from Magnas and Kinsey, who have already got a bit of distance behind them. There's a little bit of an off from a couple of drivers further back in the pack. We've got one or two drivers going off in the background. I'm afraid that's all gone wrong for Zach Green, who has ended up going rodeo over the back of one of his rivals. So Zach Green has dropped all the way to the back of the field. It looks like he's died down now. He stayed behind and not tried anything through turn eight, but he has tried it through turn nine though, and he takes the lead of the race. So Thomas Kinsey on the first lap, diving to the lead. He is on the tail of Manias as they go across the line, and Manias instantly fighting back through turn one, retakes the lead as Perez now looks potentially for a move. It's as defensive goes Kinsey, who dives back down the inside. This is a three way battle, and now Perez up into second place. Manias down into third, and he's under pressure because now comes Freddie Lloyd on the outside, out the side of Harry Bartle. Yeah, this is very interesting and a change for the lead as Perez now takes it through turn two. Retakes the lead, well he doesn't retake the lead, he now takes the lead of this race as Al can say. But still, the top three very close together. Lloyd having a think about Kinsey, he wants to get the move done. In a second position, he makes Kinsey move across and Freddie Lloyd gets in a second place. Now, they've got to respond to this quickly, they cannot avoid, they cannot afford to let Sandra Perez get too far away. He's really close up that gap, and he's going to go for the move straight away. What 
what was that? Freddie Lloyd has got massive waft in this one. And on lap six, he works his way through to the lead. Perez doesn't like that. Wants to get back on the inside. Kinsey and Clark are trying to find the way through on the inside of Lloyd as well. So Kinsey's got there. Clark has to back out of it. But Freddie Lloyd is definitely a threat to everybody now. He's got some waft as we had somebody going off there in the background, kicking up the dust. Kinsey as they go through. Yes, he is straight to the inside, side by side through turn one. It closed up as close as it could get. And now Clark dives down the inside of Kinsey oh, as well. Oh, sideways Bartle. Bartle getting a sideways there with Mackey. They very nearly ended up in the collision zone. And Kinsey managing to hold on in front of Bartle and Mackey, who are still banging wheels with each other. Clark has now got Kinsey behind him. And look, Clark is getting frustrated. Come on, stop banging wheels with me. The top two have already gone. Manyas back in this fray, as going off the track oh. there. Who is that? Is, is that, that Mackey? Mackey? That's Mackey gone off. And Mackey is out of the race by the look of it. Oh, disaster for Harrison Mackey. He had such a great chance there. And I'm afraid Harrison Mackey's race has ended. But if they start to battle, here goes Manyas on the inside of Ramakas. And Bartle's going to try and go with him as well. Ramakas will not take this defeat. Lying down, gets back on the inside of Bartle. No, it's taken me this long to get this far up. I am not going to drop out of the top six now. Lloyd is pushing Sandra Perez. Come on, stop looking back, stop defending. They're coming for us. We can battle in the final couple of corners if you want, but Clark and Kinsey are reeling us in big time. Stop defending. We can battle right to the line, but Freddie Lloyd is seeking an opportunity and it's running out. They come off the final turn. It's going to be Sandro Perez. He will win at home just in front of Freddie Lloyd by 77 thousandths of a second. Sandro Perez will put the Spanish flag on the top of the podium. What did we say about Sandro Perez? Never count him out. He has the amazing firepower. And how about that? He gives a congratulations and receives it from his two combatants, Freddie Lloyd and Cahal Clark. They fist bump and shake on a fair fight. It's first blood to MDC and Biralat. Carlos Leon and the whole crew down there will be absolutely delighted for their boy wonder, Sandro Perez. Sandro Perez ahead of Freddie Lloyd and Cahal Clark. Thomas Kinsey and Harry Bartle from Hugo Manias and Thibaut Ramakas. Isaac Phelps, Sasha Van Padbosch and Toby Gale in the top 10. Starting in third position with our man from the United Kingdom for Victory Lane Racing, Cahal Clark. And to our man in second position for the United Kingdom for Fusion Motorsport, Freddie Lloyd. And now to our race winner for Spain and MDC, Sandro Perez. Sandro. A fabulous weekend here at Zuera. It must feel so special to do it in the first race of the year and here in Spain as well. Yeah, I'm so so happy to, to get the, the first position in this start of the season. But well, it was a, a difficult weekend. We we have been working uh, from the, the Wednesday until here. So I want to thank all my team and my family. And now we, we're gonna have to keep working. So obviously heading to Marienborg next, how do you guys feel you can keep this pace going? We're going to try to, to do our best and we will have to, to make some, some better things, but for sure we will keep fighting. Fantastic. Good job. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandro Perez. Well done, buddy. The X30 senior class is the pinnacle of the IAMI Euro Series, with drivers aged over 14, and they have 10 more horsepower than the junior counterparts, taking them to a top speed of 130 kilometers an hour, similar to what you can do on the public highway a few millimeters off the ground. The competition is more intense than ever, with nearly 90 drivers from all over the world competing, and some even returning from the world of car racing to take on the ultimate karting challenge. The Senior X30 is underway now. Up we go to the first corner, and it's going to be a perfect start for Ruben Moyer. Sam Shaw gets into second place. The field works its way through the first corner, flat on the throttle. Is everybody going to get through without incident? So far, so good, but the cluster effect comes in at turn two, and the drivers are trying to charge their way forward. Ruben Moyer leads the way, though, from Shaw and Vila. Up to fourth position comes Marlo Bollier, getting the run on the inside of Finn McLaughlin.
Good start then from the entirety of the field. One car going slightly wide in the mid pack there, gets it back onto the tarmac. That's the crucial thing then as the field goes three wide round turn five, a little further back. Eduardo Villa all over the back of Sam Shaw, who checks over his shoulder just to make sure it's clear as he goes on the hunt for Ruben Moyer. Moyer had the perfect weekend as Platten. Platten. Black flag for Harry Platten. Well, that's a, that's a very big shock. Harry Platten on the very first lap of this race has been given the black flag. Goodness knows why. Caranta here being nerfed slightly by Danny Canarini, uh, Caranini, moving him up into P8 now for him. He's still battling as he dies back down the inside through turn eight, says thank you very much, I'll take that one, as the field still side by side, three rows of side by side, all six of them. Jill Caranta, a 103.3 this time as he comes through. As we watch Marlo Bollier get up the inside of Kalai Atkins, that puts him up into P6. Caranini is still there in eighth position in front of Goldstein and Caranta, then Gonzalez, and then we have the three MDC Virilards battling away with each other, Aluya, Chaos, and uh, uh, Garcia. So Aluya, Chaos, and Garcia working very hard there as they run through. But Kalai Atkins is trying to respond to Marlo Bollier. Come on, you're spending far too long racing me. Bollier wants to oh, land no! out of the way, oh, and no! then gliding. Bollier straight into the path of everybody else. There's at least two or three drivers that had to take avoiding action. That was pure egotism from both drivers. Neither Kalai Atkins or Marlo Bollier were prepared to give best to the other, and unfortunately, it ended up in contact. Now, here we comes the move. Look, Bollier is nudging Atkins. He gets alongside him, they lock wheels, and there's nothing they can do. Mavalier gets spat out, look and close. look how close that was. Go then, tucking into the slipstream gap now. Back up to six tenths of a second between the uh, top two of Villa. Is not able to close that gap to Moya. This is interesting. Moya could make this a perfect first round for the start of the season. That is a retirement, I'm afraid, for the 234. That's Danny Carinini. Well. Caranini, who was fighting at the front throughout this weekend, now sees himself broken and at the side of the track. Who oh, I've got to say, Caranta has closed in on. Jules Caranta could fight uh, back here and gain a couple more positions. If they're not going to catch the uh, drivers in front, he might as well catch them. And it's just not latching onto it as McLaughlin now is all over the back of Belota. Now Jules Caranta comes in and now McLaughlin dives down the inside for P3. Now Caranta looks to go for the move as well, stays behind as they go down in towards turn number five. Long sweeping into the tighter part of turn six and now they negotiate the left hand or the right hander of turn seven. Down into the airpin of eight and here comes Caranta down the inside. Nicely timed, separates the two VDK teammates of McLaughlin and Belota. Caranta get through to third place. Yes, he, he did. Yeah, off screen. You saw it in the bottom corner of your screen there. Caranta through turn one. Now up into P3. Now down into P4. Oh! Now down into P5. No. Down into P4 as he gets squeezed onto the runoff area. He was very lucky that the cart didn't buck him into a spin there. So Caranta still hunting down this podium finish. But up in front, Vila is now within three tenths of Moya. If he can get in the draft on the next lap, then he has a chance. And Belota gets back on the inside of Caranta. Caranta comes back at him and just drives away. Lovely move from Caranta on the switcheroo. He's able to get back into fourth position. There's a car off in the background. I think that's Sita Van Miert. As we go on to the final lap, who's going to take third in this one? Caranta fights for it fiercely, but has to go to the outside line and down the inside. Who was that? Is that Belota? I think it is. Yeah, Belota in the 206. Now back in two. I think Moya has just done enough here to hold on in front of Vila. This is all about parking the bus for McLaughlin. He wants to hang on. It's up the inside. That's a beautiful little lunge from Gonzalez, who's managed to work his way through past Sam Shaw. 2023 Suera is his to command. Vamos for 2023. It's game on for Ruben Moya. He dances to the win in Suera. It's the perfect weekend. Win after win after win. Nobody can beat Ruben Moya in the Pantano in Suera 2023. My goodness me. A fantastic showing then here at Suera. But there, the driver on your screen, Ruben Moya. A perfect weekend. Ruben Moya has done a fantastic job. Eduardo Vila in second from Eloy Gonzalez. What a battle to third. Belota is fourth from Shaw and Goldstein. Garcia is seventh. Atkins is in eighth from Chaus and Harrison.
He's starting for Belgium in third, Sam Belotta. And in second position for Italy, Eduardo Villa. And to our race winner for Spain, Ruben Moya. We've all been waiting for this for quite some time, but finally you get to taste victory in the AMI Euro Series. The, the relief must be immense. Yes, finally we won here in Tvera. Uh, many years trying this. Back in the years 2017, it was the same. Very fast, starting from pole and then problems with the engine. So yeah, finally, after many years, we, we get it here in Tvera. So obviously now the focus has got to be Belgium coming up in seven weeks. Is the pace still going to be there for the Pantano or is there still more homework to do? Of course we'll be there. We have uh, Christian, he's amazing with doing the chassis, so it's always Wherever we go, the chassis is the fastest, the tyres always look the best. So the main thing is always him, the chassis is amazing always. Fantastic. Enjoy the moment and enjoy the victory. Well done. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner here in Zuela, Ruben Moya. Well, what a fantastic weekend it has been here in the IAMI Euro Series. Across all three categories, we have had some sensational motorsport. Nearly 200 drivers competing from all over Europe and even further afield. Mini X30 looks like it's going to be another title battle between the boys from Oliver Rowland Motorsport and Fusion Motorsport. An all-British podium, but there'll be several drivers next time out in Belgium who will want to take it away. In Junior X30, it's open season, but it's nice to see Sandro Perez take the win on home soil. All of their rivals are going to be right on the bubble. And in Senior X30, well, Pantano Racing is here to stay at the top of the roost. However, there's still going to be great challenges from the drivers at TB and all of the other competitors that will push them. It's going to be an amazing battle in 2023. Join us seven weeks from now at Gaffney de Fania in Marienborg in Belgium for the second round of the IAMI Euro Series 2023. From here in Spain, hasta la vista. Take care, everyone. Several drivers have had their turn at the front, but with the pressure mounting and the races getting closer with every battle, we still have no idea who can hold it together of intense racing. Dan Aliman wins in Marienburg. Simon Rabakis wins at home. What a performance. Man, you beat. Let's race at Cote de Vanya. Eli Goldstein does it. What a victory.